Robert Shedlock, Thursday the 3rd for Sunday 6th of December 2020. Hello, I'm Robert and welcome to my shed and my review of the Kirschen 6mm Morsis Chisel. Now, this is a, by way of an unboxing video. Uh, I didn't arrive in... I, I unpacked the box that, uh, that it was chipped in, thinking there'd be another box inside. There wasn't. So I'm sorry about that. You don't have the joy of actually opening the box. Instead, this is how it's arrived. So, sticker from a reseller. That comes off relatively easily. I don't think you can blame Kirshen for that. That was the, I'm pretty sure that was the resource part number. Uh, goes in the bin. And this sticker is a manufacturer's mark that is also peeling off. That's warm enough in here now, so I can stick that down. I think it's a bit too long. Sorry about the shirt sleeves. It's been too cold in here all day and then, yeah. Okay. And there's this little, there's a couple of other packing pieces. This bit is, uh, looks like plastic, you know, plastic rather than rubber tubing. Sealed at the end, probably heat shrink. Again, that's just putting it in the post. And then this thing, just hang it up on the wall, which I quite like, because I, I like to hang my tools up. Fortunately, it looks like it's stapled in, probably won't rotate. So if I try and rotate it, yeah, it's going to pull out. It's held in with a metal staple. That's a little polyethylene hanging hook. Disappointed with that. Um, on the whole though, a very nice tool. To compare this to a bench chisel, now I previously called bench chisels mortise chisels. Many people do. Mortise chisel like this. If you call this a mortise chisel, this is an English mortise chisel. Which is to say it's for the English technique of gouging out large chunks of wood. Um, I'm not sure it is very English technique, certainly it's German make, uh, very reputable German make, established 1858. Uh, wasn't my first choice, this is one I could actually get hold of, apparently Brexit is making it difficult to get tools according to the one supplier who failed to sell me a, um, a different make, I'll put, it in the, I'll put the full story in the comments. Uh, so, features. Wood, hardwood, metal covered in plastic coated paint that I don't really like the look of. It looks cheap and plasticky. Wood is quite well lacquered, extra lacquer on the striking surface, presumably to help it survive for longer. Little indentation at the top to ease out the surface. And this, rubber, this leather washer here, which will stop the blade driving back up into the handle and causing any damage when you strike it. In terms of playing out, it's not hard, it's not easy to see what the advantages are. So I thought what I'd do, um, yeah, because you can't see what's happening inside. So I thought what I'd do is I'd take a piece of wood, put a six mil groove in it and see how well this performs. Um, but first I need to get it sharpened. So this is my sharpening station and I'm going to try and get a proper edge on this. Um, I can tell this has been uh, polished to a very high shine and lacquered with the blade. Now that will help it survive on the shelf but it isn't very good for sharpening it. So first thing I need to do is to get that lacquer off and the usual sharpening gauge is a complete waste of time because there's no way this, this thickness of blade will kind of fit through the hole in this. So. Away. The first thing to do is to just get a straightforward bevel on the end of this. Point flat, I'm working freehand back and forth. Okay, I, can, I don't know if you can see that, but I can definitely see the lacquer being pulled off that. I'm just going to keep going. I'm using a thousand grit. Diamond stone. Okay. So I need to put an end. Okay, so I'm going to give up on that. I've taken, definitely taken the stuff off the top, which is where it really matters. And I can definitely feel an edge there. And I'm starting to develop a burr as well. I can feel. And I can't show you the burr on the camera, but that's the back. You can see all the little chips and dinks, dents in the in the shiny surface, that's because of the lacquer, uh, scratches on the lacquer, so 
Now I'm not quite sure whether I should try and polish this entire surface, which is going to take all day, or whether I should try for the ruler trick. So the ruler trick is where you take your stone, put a ruler on the edge, take your tool and put it down there. That way you're only grinding away the back end of the the business end of the, the tool, grinding off the burr and taking off any lacquer that's in that end. And the you're close enough to find that it's not going to make any difference to the angle of the cut. If anything, it's going to make it slightly sharper. Well, that's interesting. You can see where the where the rule is pulled along the edge, and I can feel. You can see the lacquer's gone. I'm just trusting that this camera is focusing. I'm not going to drop. Lacquer's gone. I've got a nice, nice sharp edge there. So that is actually used all that. It's impressive. I also brought along my little square. I tried this earlier, and I can see that this thing, the back, is entirely square. Now the reason I check for that is I found reports of concave backs on these chisels, or some cushion chisels, and I wanted to make sure that wasn't applying here because if the back had been concave, I would have had to take the whole back down. So that's uh, it's good to know, I'll leave that in a minute. <laughs> right, so now I've got the chisel that's... Okay, I could probably have tied up a bit more penetrating oil and so on, I would like to put proper surface on that at some point, but that's a sharp edge, and I'm going to try and use that. Um, so yeah, no secondary bevel, just a straightforward sharpening. Um, should do for this job. Back to the bench. Okay, so I sharpened my chisel. Uh, feels nice and sharp, and I'm going to cut a groove in this piece of wood. I've, Made a mistake on starting again, so I'm doing this new piece of wood. Uh, first thing is to mark it out. For that, I want to get a, a square and a marking, uh, a marking knife, just a simple scalpel, craft scalpel, nothing fancy. Gonna... It's got a few times to get a good, nice mark. And that's, that's the line of my my housing. Housing does go across the grain, but then more difficult to cut and grooves go along the grain. Because the grain's working against you, you have to break the grain before you waste out. Uh, next, I take my 6mm mark. This is actually not 6mm, this is 5 point... Um, 5 point... So it's 5.5, which is, I don't believe. Five point eight. I um, must have moved it before. Five point eight mil wide, which is enough to get six more groove out of. You're still dealing with the accuracy of your knife blade for marking out. Now a tighter knife blade would make it uh, sharp enough to make a straight line. Point. It's a general, generic softwood. I can't do it in this, I can't remember really the trouble. So I'm going to take my uh, blade, holding it by the blade near the end, I'm just going to mark off these square ends and the heft of this tool, which is not actually all that heavy compared to a lot of tools, but for a chisel it's very heavy. And the heft of it really does help enlarge this mark, this knife line. So we've got proper nicely defined lines and what I need to do now is uh, take my widest bench, bench chisel and just 
make those a bit more well defined. This is a difficult bit. If you're going to make a mistake, you're going to make it here. That's that. I've done that to mark the edges because that's a nice thick plate. Next thing to do is score out what I can. And I'm going to go with that spoon technique. Mark the edges and keep scoring, and it works. Now I've got the top done, and that's a difficult bit. That's done without tear out, which is good. There's a little bit of a, a little bit of material there, but that can be cut out with ease. Right, so I'm now going to try and do the rest of this. Let's just get a let's pop this down so it doesn't move. So try, and I'm going to get a piece of scrap wood. Here, so I don't strike my bench if I do mess up. Right, so I'm going to cut this down. Keep going until I get to the stop line. That's torn up, yeah. Okay, let's not do that. I've seen this done, I've never done it myself, so I'm a little bit nervous. Let's get the edges marked up a bit better than that. Okay. I can mess it up quite happily. Hmm. I thought this tool might like work of this job, but it seems to be making quite heavy work of it. Okay, let's try. Now I've got a, now I've got a depth marked, I'm going to just try going down to it. No, no. This is just in the way. Oh yeah, stable on. Horrible. Factory-wise, I do not approve. But well, that's, that's doing the job. Um, I don't even need a mallet for this. I can just sink this right into the joint. Okay, now I know what I'm doing. This is going a lot more easily. So one of the reasons for buying a 6mm chisel is to tighten the bottom of 6mm grooves because or NATO's, because I can't, can't fit my my router plane blade, quarter inch router plane blade into a 6mm groove. Which is an issue, not necessarily an insurmountable one. So that's gone quite a way down. I'm going to do another pass to. When I bought the plywood, they said it was 6mm plus or minus 0.3. Depending on metric to imperial conversions, and I assume that meant it was going to be quarter inch. It was 6mm. Oh well. Most of the waste removed, so I'm going to just spin it around and go in over the other side, remembering not to avoid tear out. This is my first time cutting a housing joint by hand, uh, not quite. 
and did some in the bench tops. So as I'm cutting a narrow housing drive by hand, size to a chisel, and a relatively wide piece of wood. Okay, so a little bit tidy up needed. There's a bit of fluff there. Um, that piece is wanting to escape. I'm going to switch down to a smaller chisel for the side work because that's more delicate. Um, so yes, last time I used my 7 8 inch dovetail chisel uh, and I just hoped it wouldn't break. I was on a very tight budget at the time. This time I'm a lot happier. So let's measure the depth. That's 6 mil. 6 point knot. 6 point knot. 6.4, 6.4, 6 .4. 6 .4. so I've run off slightly at this end, but only just at that end. Um, still a bit of swarf in, in there, but I can see. See a ridge at the bottom. I just want to check the measurements of that. Yeah, it's six point something. So it's yeah. So it's at least six mil all the way down. It's not more than six and a half to any point. It's six mil wide, I assume, all the way along. Let's just check that. Uh, that's. That's 5.8. That's 6.2. That's 6 and a bit. So it's not perfect 6 mil. But the acid test, that fits in very easily. A little bit of rattle room. So, okay. I'm a little bit disappointed in that groove. It's slightly too wide. Which is probably more of my marking out than it is of the chisel. So, what I've learnt uh, is that this is probably not going to work for large scale um, grooving. Now, let's take a look at the quality of the joint. Uh, you can see that the Pretty much just flat all the way down. There's a little bit of a, a little bit just, just here was taken out a bit more than I should have done, and a little bit of a notch here. Um, this swap has not come out properly. It's a, bit, a little bit of damage to the sidewalls at the bottom there, actually. Now I'm looking at it. I don't know if I can get that on camera, but internal sidewalls are a bit damaged. And also on this side, just here. So it's, there's a bit of tear up with the final cutout of the depth, probably because it didn't go in deep enough on the sides. Um, there's, the sides are not smooth. There's definite horizontal lines there. Again, I don't know if I can see that on camera. Um, the exit side, there's the tiniest bit of tear up just here. And Tiny bit of tear up there as well. The top entrance side, so we can call it that. The, the, there's that's coming loose. It's not detached. And if that makes a difference, pre glue that back on. And there's just the tiniest bit of tear at the bottom there as well. So it proved to be a lot more difficult than I thought. It didn't fit the piece of wood. I could practice and get better. Um, I'm starting to think this isn't the right tool for the job, which is a shame. What this will be very useful for, however, is getting, if I have a 6 mil groove already there, I can slot this in, 
and use it to tidy up the base of the groove, which is very useful if I was to get a 6mm plane, a dado plane. Also enough, planes that cut dados are called, sorry, planes that cut housings are called dados, dado planes. There's no such thing as a housing plane, although what well, America is called a dado, here in the UK we call it a housing. I believe housing is used across Europe. So, all in all, what do I think of this tool? Um, well, the staple of the pa packaging hook annoys me, but washer is never centered. Um, those are cosmetic issues. Um, it does the job. It does exactly the job it's supposed to do. It's very fast and easy. I could have put this through a much bigger test. I feel like I should have got some 6x2 and cut a 4 inch by 6mm soft um, mortise with it and that would have probably done a lot better for my self esteem. Um, to be honest, at this stage I don't think this is worth the cost. This is necessary for me to get a 6mm chisel. It's not necessary for me to get a mortise chisel. I'm struggling to think when this is going to come in really useful. Um, for me, personally. Uh, mortises, yes, they're great. Six more mortises. They're really only useful for housings, uh, for plywood and so forth. So I probably should have got a bench chisel. Having said that, this is an absolutely perfectly well-made tool. It is solid and does the job. It's got everything it needs where it counts. If it had been half the price, I'd be happy to recommend it, as it was. It was just a little too pricey for the job, um, which is a shame. Uh, but it's going to last. It's a very well-made tool. Uh, it's got barrels and stuff where I need it. Compare it with this. It's, this is a, this is what I built most of this workbench with. My 7 8 inch chisel. I thought it was a 1-inch chisel until I measured it recently. That is mushrooming. That's what happens to a chisel when you whack the top of the hammer too, not too often. And this piece of paint here is to make it look like it has a ferrule. That's how you tell a cheap chisel. This has a ferrule, which is painted to make it look like it's decorative. That's how you can tell an expensive chisel. Um, this is a Kirshen 6mm mortise chisel. Kirshen also has two chairs, are a German company established in 1858, making traditional hand tools. This is the polished version, they also make an unpolished version. The unpolished version is by far recommended if you can find it. This one is designed to look good in a shop. These ferrules are metal, they are solid, they'll do the job nicely. Everything about this is designed to last. It is an industrial tool, it is not uh, a plaything. Um, the lacquer is a bit overkill. Um, it's two-handed, which is again a bit overkill. You could do serious work with this. Um, keep it sharp and it will do good things for you. Sharpening it's a nightmare with the lacquer on. Uh, I've heard that they can, can be convex on the blade, this one isn't. It's marked with a six to indicate the size and a embossed with a two chairs Emboss engraved with two cherries there. Uh, logo. This is going to be useful to sort out the bottom of the six more grooves. It is not good enough for me to sink six more grooves because there is too much side movement, um, which is a shame. Uh, I was hoping to get much higher quality on softwood than I got. And I could improve with practice, but I don't think it's worth it. I think the best thing for me to do is to get a dado plane to sink dados, housings, and use, keep this for mortises and for cleaning out the grooves where I can't get in a, one of the large chisels. Um, it does, however, sink beautifully. For chopping, this is really, really nice. By hand, push it into the wood and it just sinks in like cheese. 
a knife and a cheese. Um, that surprised me. Um, didn't need a melt of this as much as I thought I would because it's relatively heavy for a chisel compared to my probably about twice the weight of my 7 eighths um, wooden handled dovetail chisel. It's a 6 mil, which is a quarter inch. So nearly a quarter of the size, widthwise. Um, and it weighs roughly the same as my block plane. Uh, maybe a little bit less. So yeah, it has enough heft to really get into the work. It's strong enough that you can do a lot of levering and it will just cut through anything if it's sharp enough. It seems to be a good steel. So it's kept its edge with that small amount of work. I could use this, probably use this all day quite happily. Um, the only problems are cosmetic. The ticker is falling off. The hanging thing doesn't it just gets in the way and you have to pull it off. Um, it's a seal really, I suppose. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where we are. Good work. I could put this in here. It will hold up. It's uh, close enough. You can get away with it. There's a school of thought says so what you should do is get an eighth of an inch uh, groove and then Cut this appropriate size dado, or soft appropriate size rebate on the side, sink it in. Uh, I'm waffling. Uh, it's too hot, I'm waffling. I'm going to stop now. Uh, tune in again next time for more shed related fun. For now, ta ta. Conclusions. This is the cushion, also known as two chairs, six millimeter mortise. So, this is my view of a cushion, six millimeter two things I've forgotten.